Hi folks, let's use Fusion 360 to create a three-dimensional blob shape. Let's create some awesome tool paths in the Fusion 360 cam. Then let's head over to the Tormach 440 right behind me and test out what kind of 3D surface finish we can get with this machine. Welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. I've literally only had the 440 for a few days, so lots to come, folks. I've had a lot of requests to see it cut in steel. That's next on the list. We're going to do more putting it through its paces. Lots to come. But this machine has a 10,000 RPM spindle. I want to see how that works. 3D machining isn't honestly what I do a ton of. And that's one of the things I'm excited about is can we get something that looks really good? A few caveats. We don't have a coolant system on this yet. I think I'm going to pick up a fog buster. Machine's not even bolted down. So... Um, and I'm not a 3D expert, I don't do a ton of ball end milling, but we were playing around with this yesterday and we got, uh, we made this little test part and folks, it turned out awesome and I think maybe, knock on wood, we can do even better. And it's just fun. So with that, Fusion 360. So to create this 3D shape I'm talking about, go over to your create form, this purple block thing, and we'll, that'll change this to the sculpt menu here, see right here, and we'll click create box. I'd never done this before. It's really easy though. I'll click on this plane here and I'll just sketch a two by two box. Boom. I'll modify edit form. And this is really easy. I don't really know for me what practical application it has. Here it's going to create this cool shape for us that will machine, but I've got to learn more about what this means for actual real work. But you can click on faces, so we'll click, we'll click on this face, and then you can just drag stuff around. Or you can click on lines or whatever they're called, vertices or something, and, and, and push there. So literally, yeah, let's create like a bowl shape thing here. Pull this up, maybe. Pull this in. Uh, what else? Uh, can you put, oh, you can pull point two. There you go. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah, so if we push that point down. So, there you go. I mean, hey, just having fun here. Now, this is what I think is cool about having an integrated CAD and CAM and, frankly, the power of the Fusion 360 CAM. Click over here. Click on the sculpt. Go to CAM. Click Setup. Looks fine to me. And most importantly, under Stock, we're starting with a 2 by two by one inch piece of raw material. Awesome. Z axis is pointed up. Click OK. 3D adaptive clearing. So what we want to do here is we want to remove as much as we can with a solid carbide straight flute, not a ball end mill. Ball end mills are awesome and they're going to be what make this thing shine, but we want to hog out as much as we can before that. So I'm going to use tool 31 and my feeds and speeds in Fusion right now are really still oriented towards our Tormach uh, PCNC 1100. So uh, we're just, in fact, hopefully by the time this video comes out, we've released our Lakeshore Carbide tooling video series. Um, I hope so. But we've got 10,000 RPMs. Let's make use of that. So under this Excel file, again, that'll be all this link below, or you can watch our Carbide tooling series to find this file. We have a quarter inch end mill and we are in three flutes. So we know that and we're gonna change, uh, I've already got it at 650, but you know we wanna basically drive this RPM number up to 10,000. So if we hit 650, 655 or whatever, you'll see what that is. And I'm gonna go, not quite 45 inches a minute, so change the inch per tooth down, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 1, 2, 5. This is our cut recipe, 10,000 RPMs and 40 inches a minute, which is 650 service feet per minute and about 1.3 thou uh, per tooth. Not a bad cut. So we'll change this here, 10,000, cut feed 40. Lead in is, you know, we can keep that at 20. Geometry, I don't have to click anything at least yet. Heights, likewise. Passes. We are going to change our optimal load to 0 0.075 and then for multiple depths or maximum roughing step down 
we want to uh, layer or waterline this down so that we step out the material. So we need to reduce this. I'm going to try one eighth of an inch. Normally you like to cut more depth, uh, especially with this thinner width of cut that we're doing, but you need, you'll see here when it generates the tool path, we need to do those progressive step downs to rough out the most of our material. I'm only going to leave, um, you know, 10, 15 or 15 thou stock. Click OK. See what we get here. Awesome. Take a look here. We are going to cheat a little because we're just going to hold this part in the vise. So I'm only going to let it come down about or to point uh, negative 0.75. That way we've got a way to hold on to the material. So what we'll do under heights is say bottom height will actually be from the model top down negative 0.75. And actually we might be pretty close to okay because it looks like that's going to drop us to this plane here, which is perfect. Now why is it giving me so many little step downs over there? I don't like that. Increasing the fine step down to say 0.1. Or 0.12. I really want to force this to cut down an eighth of an inch steps. Okay, exactly. Do a quick simulation here to see what we get. Actually, we really just want to be left with that. So that's actually leaving, you can see it's actually leaving more than I'd like. So let's go ahead and decrease the step down. Max of 0.1, 0.08. And we'll do a simulation and we'll just wrap it through it and see. That should be better. Let's move on though. Next thing I'm going to do is same adaptive, uh, 3D adaptive, but with a ball end mill. So right click and just choose duplicate. And what we'll do now is edit that and select our ball end mill, 3 8 inch, two flute. And again, and we're going to run basically the same recipe, 10,000. RPMs, 40 inches a minute. Now it's only a two flute, so that's going to be a higher chip load per tooth, but we've done most of the roughing out, so I think we'll be okay. We still want to leave some stock, so we'll leave 10 thou of stock, and we'll decrease the roughing step down here, maximum and min, just to get a little bit of a better finish. Okay. Okay, okay let's simulate all this, just fast forward through it all, and turn off the tool path. Okay, pretty close. Obviously, we've got some roughness here. That's okay. So now comes the real mojo. 3D contour. Here's the other thing I think Fusion 360 does a damn good job on, which is I've had the chance now to play with, either use or, or play with quite a few cam packages. And frankly, they all do a crummy job of explaining what toolpath operations do what. And I tell you, the hover overs on Fusion 360 are actually pretty darn useful. They actually explain what you need to know in terms that you can understand. So thank you for that. I played around with a few ones uh, the other day. I like Contour the best. So let's click on Contour. It's going to keep our, our 3 8 ball end mill from the last op. We're going to go fast though because in theory we shouldn't have much chip to take. So now we're gonna actually go faster because two reasons. One, we gotta get this thing done and we're gonna take really small step overs. So it's going to be a long tool path, but also there's no chip evacuation problem. And actually you wanna go fast because you don't wanna be rubbing. So we're gonna try 10,000 RPMs and 100 inches a minute. And that's fast for me. It's a 5,000 uh, chip load per tooth. Um, but again, that's fine because you're not going to be hogging out. It's, it's very small, um, small cuts. So let's see here. Don't need to change much else. And passes, now this is really important. I'm going to drive down the tolerance to say two tenths. We want to check machine shallow areas. I can't tell you why other than you do. The step down, we want to drive it down quite small. So we'll do one thou. Same thing here. We'll let this one be two thou. You can play around with these. The smaller the numbers, the in theory, better your surface finish, longer the toolpath. You can quickly get to multiple hour toolpaths here. Minimum or maximum step down, we definitely don't want more than say two thou. Uh, for those of you that aren't machinists, a sheet of standard printer paper is about four thousandths thick. So we're saying to do step downs half the thickness of a sheet of printer paper. So knock on wood, 
this should look pretty good. And I think that's it. We're gonna turn on smoothing. Smoothing, I think, is a little bit of a misnamed operation because it doesn't actually smooth the part. What it does is it tries to reduce the number of lines in the code by saying, there's two points and I can go in between them and basically hold within two tenths of a thousandths but take away a couple of movements between these two points it'll reduce the number of lines of codes, which is useful in a smoother operation. And that's, that's where it comes from. Uh, I think they should rename it. Woo, okay, so now got a couple things here. First of all, beautiful toolpath. Um, you can see, well, it's beautiful. Already though, if we click on simulate you'll, and go to statistics, you'll see this is already, oh, 20 minutes. Actually, that's not bad at all. Wow, I thought that might be an hour. Well, one of the things though is that it's not coming down over the side. So what we'll do is fix that by editing and under geometry, tool containment, tool center on boundary, no. We can say tool is outside. And again, thank you to Fusion 360 because if you hover over it, you actually get intelligible explanations. I think that'll do what we needed to do. Um, I can't remember if I want rest machining on here or not. I'm not sure it matters. I'm actually going out to Autodesk University in Las Vegas in about a month. I'm really excited. First time going, and I'm hoping to learn a lot more about some of the things I don't know about uh, Fusion 360. So if anyone's out in Vegas and wants to meet up, shoot me an email or a message. It's the first, uh, first few days in December. Woo! Okay, so there's a toolpath. Look at that thing. I think it's beautiful. Simulate statistics. 35 minutes. Not bad, folks. Um, and by the way... Darn it, this is ridiculous. When I started in 2006 doing this with my TAG and sheet cam and Bobcad cam, this was so much harder. The resources at hand were crummy. There was really no YouTube. The machine was nothing. To have a 440 now and Fusion 360, the price, the value, the opportunities, the ease of which to use it, it's, uh, it is frustrating. I wish greatly I had had that back then. Hey, um, I'm excited I have it now, but really folks, it's really cool. So we will do simulate. Uh, let's just do a, um, oh, gotta make sure we click on this one. Simulate and fast forward through it all. And boom. Let's see what we get. Okay, one quick change. The second operation, which was the first operation using the ball end mill, we have we don't need all of these extra passes. And I realized that when it was cutting so much air, you can see all these passes up here. And it was a mistake on my part. We edit this toolpath. What we should have done, we had rest machining, machining checked. The source of the rest machining was from stock setup. And rest machining, if you don't know, basically looks at, in this instance, the previous operation, sees what has been removed and subtracts that. So it doesn't cut air in theory. And so if we choose that, we're gonna get a much simpler toolpath. Forgive me if you can hear the machine running in the background. Very powerful thing that will you know, greatly improve your efficiency, just like so. So that's what's running right now.
take a look at this thing, I will note um, not having any sort of coolant. I'm wondering if that's one reason why uh, we get some little lingering chips. It might just be my fees and speeds, but there's a first look. Again, you get these um, little grainy spots. I don't think that's a machine at all. I think that's a chip getting recut. Um, may actually be the quality or use. I don't know which where I got this carbide uh, ball end mill from, but let me uh, let me hit it with a Scotch Bright pad real quick and see if that doesn't help it. So take a look. I think that's pretty darn good. I did hit it with a Scotch Bright wheel and then a quick uh, little hit of this. Uh, polish. I couldn't find the polish I like because we're, we've still got stuff in boxes because guess what? We're actually moving again. But I, I think this is spectacular. Um, I would welcome tips, please, in the comments below for you guys that do more 3D machining on better cam strategies or, or recommendations. I don't like the little nicks that were left. They, they cleaned up pretty easily, but again, what can we do to do this even better? But folks, it's 440. Uh, again, more to come. I want to cut steel with it. I want to put it through its paces, but so far, so good. Thanks for watching, folks. Take care. Enjoy. See you soon.